Hey, everybody, it's Andrea. Before we start today's show, I have a super quick announcement to share with all of you. Beginning in April, I'm going to be launching a series of college to career live weekend boot camps to help graduating seniors as well as juniors who are confused about what jobs or careers they might want to pursue when they graduate. So imagine going from confused to confident with at least three different career options you'd be psyched to explore by the end of day one of the boot camp. And then learning the tools, tactics, and the strategies to find those jobs by the end of day two. The boot camp is live and it's led by me over Zoom. And you can learn more about it at College to Career Academy. That's college, the number two, career dot academy. Or you can just look me up on LinkedIn and check out the featured section of my LinkedIn page. I can't imagine a better graduation gift for the college students in your life. Thanks so much for listening. And I know you're going to enjoy my next incredible guest. Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career triple shot K-Cup with my guest, Austin Belsack. In the background of all of this, right? You're testing, you're iterating, you land a dream job at Microsoft and your title is partner manager. Mm -hmm. When did you start connecting the dots and saying, holy shit, I have actually landed on something here. It's about the referrals. It's about strategically building up your network And then creating what you have coined the value validation projects to Mm -hmm. try to land your dream jobs at whatever companies they may be, which is what cultivated culture is all about. Yeah, no, absolutely. It happened very, very quickly. So I actually started cultivated culture about six months after I landed at Microsoft. And the reason for that is, is that so many people came out of the woodwork, especially people from Wake. They found a way to reach me and they were like, Hey, aren't you the guy who had the terrible grades? You know, how are you working at Microsoft? And I just explained to them what I did. I told them that, you know, hey, I started applying online, it didn't work. So I started this new process where I just reached out to these people and I created this body of work and these value validation projects. And everybody had the same response. They all said, I never thought about that, but it makes so much sense. And that's something that I still hear a lot today in, in the feedback from people who are you know, on our email list or in the community. But when I heard that from the 20th person or whatever it was, I figured we might be onto something here. You know, All these people who went to a good school who were... Many of them were working good jobs, but they wanted to get out of them. They're really smart people. You know, They have much better grades than I did. And they're telling me, like, this makes a lot of sense, but I'd never thought about it. That was sort of a light bulb moment. So I did what I just talked about. I said, let's try to turn this into something. And I wrote a a massive blog post on everything that I'd learned. And I'd spent a lot of time reading other people's content. I'd followed a lot of other people who were in this sort of online business and marketing space. I spent a lot of time... I would save articles I liked and I would read through them and I would make notes on what I liked and what I didn't. So I had a pretty good sense of how to write a good blog post just from doing those things. So I wrote this 3,000 to 5,000 word guide called How to Get a Job Anywhere with No Connections. And I put it on this blog. It was the only post on the site. And I ended up doing some promotion. I found all these other people in the career space who actually had an audience. And I emailed it to them. And I said, Hey, you know, here's a story about how I ended up at this, this job at Microsoft. Maybe it's valuable for your audience. 
And I ended up getting a bunch of them to share it with their audience. So we got a, a pretty big response, you know, far larger than I had ever expected. And all these people kept telling me the same thing, you know, wow, this makes so much sense. I'd never thought about it before. And so that was about six months in. The funny part is that I was terrified that Microsoft was going to tell me that I wasn't allowed to do this. So I actually did all this under a pen name with like, it was a fake name, I had a fake picture. And it actually took me about a year of doing this before I transferred it over to my real name. But yeah, I just started putting it out there and it got this great response. And ever since then, it's been the goal has been to teach people that same system that I learned as I was going through the job search. I'd love your thoughts on this, Austin, because you are so expert in this field. And because one of the many patterns that I've seen after interviewing hundreds of professionals just like you in dozens of different industries over the last several years is that unless you want to be, you really want to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer, and even then, I don't think it's fixed in stone. I think it doesn't matter where you start your career. The first one, two, or even three jobs don't really matter. And so the whole idea that college students and their families, their parents are twisting themselves into knots, thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do for my capital C career is wasted energy. It is wasted anxiety and mental stress. And instead, they should just take a deep breath and do something that interests them, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Because the open secret, I think, about career progressions is that it is super personal. You can't predict where it's going to lead you. You have to just do it. It's iterative. Definitely. I think it's really sort of this idea of your vibe attracts your tribe, if you will, or, or the law of attraction in, in the sense that what you put out there will come back to you. So if the thing that you want to do is, let's say, become a digital marketer at Google, well, if you go and just start doing that, those opportunities will come to you. You know, if you want to be in film production, well, go start producing your own films and put them out there and those opportunities will will come to you. So I think it's it's just unfortunate because the way that the world is moving, especially in the last 10, 20 years, a lot of the jobs that many people listening to this are going to end up in, the folks that they're asking for advice from don't know those, jo those jobs exist. So like my parents knew you could work at Microsoft, but they didn't know that you could work as you know an account manager for advertising. And my professors certainly didn't know that. And the people in career services didn't really know that. And so the problem is these jobs are... New jobs are being created every day and new ways to create income and, and make a living are, are being you know created every single day. And so the biggest thing that any of us can do is first explore. Like The biggest issue with passion is that people tend to think it's one, something that we're born with. It's a need. And that's certainly not true. I mean, you called it out earlier where I, I didn't major in career counseling, right? I, if you had asked me in college what I wanted to do, this would have, wouldn't have even been on my radar. And now me it's... Either, a, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> As exactly. a poli-sci Asian studies and Chinese major, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And But why did that happen? Well, it's because we explored... And then what tends to happen is that passion stems through action. So first, you need to explore. You need to take action on some things. And then what happens is first, you start to enjoy the process. So you're reading something, you're finding it interesting, it's motivating you to read more. And then when you start to put something out there, you start to take action, you get positive feedback. So people say to you, Hey, this was really good, or I really like this. And then that motivates you to read more and to get better. And so that's where the cycle of passion comes from. You know, for me, I start, I, I post this article and then everybody says, this is really great. Tell me more about this other thing. So then I write that next article and then so on and so forth. And then it feels really good that I'm putting something out there and these people are saying, wow, I, I really like this. So what I encourage people to do if, if I work with somebody who's sort of lost or, or not sure where they want to go, what I have them do is these, I call them 30 day mini pilots, where if you're interested in something, I encourage you to set a goal that's realistic, but a bit of a stretch for 30 days. 
and basically you dive in and you learn as much as you can. You commit to a daily practice and you try to achieve that goal in 30 days. And then you assess on day 31, you say, did I enjoy this or did I not? And if you didn't, you can give yourself permission to quit and move on to the next thing. But if you did enjoy it, you could spend the next 30 days going a little bit deeper. And so what that does is it allows us to make... There has to be a certain level of investment that we make before we understand whether or not we like something. It allows us to make that investment. But it also gives us permission to drop things that we don't like. Because I think one of the unfortunate parts about our society is that we're taught to like never quit. Like Winners never quit. And that's not true. Like Winners stop doing things all the time. They, they stop doing things that don't work. They stop doing things they don't like. They stop doing things that don't make them happy. And that's why they end up winning. And so we all need to adopt that mentality where just because you start something doesn't mean you you have to keep it forever. You can stop doing that thing. And so if you're hungry to explore, if you're passionate to explore, and you're willing to take action and give yourself permission to stop doing the things you don't like, that's really how you're going to figure out where you want to go. And then once you figure out this thing that you're excited about, if you just start creating, if you start putting things out into the world that are relevant to that discipline, you're going to attract people, you're going to attract opportunities, you're going to attract things that are relevant. And as that area evolves, so will your projects and so will the things that you do. But you don't have to necessarily know like, this is the job title that I'll be working in in 10 years. You can just know, I really want to be doing this type of thing. And if I put out content, if I put out information, if I put out work that is in that realm, those opportunities will be available to me no matter what they look like. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.